Hi, and welcome to Debunk File. My name is Sepp, and today we're going to be taking a look at the tragic tale behind the website Poorly Planned Comics. It's been a while since we've done an internet video, if you don't count our separate 4chan deep dive series, but in just about every single one of them ever, the topic in question would either reside on Reddit or YouTube, but not today. Really, it makes sense. On Reddit and YouTube, it's much more possible to actually find things. While it's still quite difficult, it can be done. These platforms are used so often that things that were previously unearthed can still be found, whether that's by accident or some other reason. And this has led to many interesting things over the years, but the actual web is a little different. How exactly do you unearth a website when you don't even know it exists? This in particular has always fascinated me, because when you think about it, there are surely so many oddities on the actual web that we may simply never know about. Tonight though, we did find something deep in the far reaches of the internet, this site is known as Poorly Planned Comics, and this rabbit hole culminated in one of the most tragic tales I have ever encountered online. In short, Poorly Planned Comics was a massive site all about one specific man's digital comics that he would post. These days, the site is offline too, and we'll get to why that is, but luckily, there were a lot of saves on the internet archive, and there's even an archive site of the comics right on Google. I'm not sure if they followed a specific schedule or anything, but in the span of over half a decade, new additions to these comics would be posted. They definitely had... style, to say the least. The comics were, as the title suggested, pretty primitive in their art style, but they most certainly made up for that in just how... out of the box they were. In looking at these, it seems that the number one characteristic that almost every edition shared was that they broke the fourth wall so many times. You almost couldn't even understand what was going on by the end of them, and as we'll see later, this was definitely intentional. The very first comic on the site was simply titled, Poorly Planned Comics, and is a pretty fitting intro to what I'm talking about. It is way more tame than the majority of the other comics on this site, but it does still showcase the fourth wall breaking that will begin really taking over soon. Due to the massive amount of comics on the site, I'm not going to go through all of them, as that is pretty much impossible. Rather, I'm going to highlight a few of them on our journey to the end. With that being said, the next comic of note is The Entire Universe Falls Apart. Our first showcase of things really getting weird, as it truly lives up to the title. It follows the small cast of main characters slowly realize that nothing is real, and in doing that, the comic itself starts falling apart. It's very hard to follow, as the deeper you delve into the comic, which is massive this time around, may I add, the panels themselves start breaking and the characters themselves cease to even live in them anymore. But most peculiar of all, are these small moments where the chaos actually stops and they give way to these deep paragraphs. The sad and obvious truth of the matter is that art, once formalized or mechanized, is no longer art and the few arts that have not been formalized are now being mechanized. There is no mystery or talent required to artistic beauty, and if a talentless person can do it, why should we have any regard to those who require talent to produce the same result? John may spend a week painting a tree, but Jane will take a photograph and use a workshop program to make the picture appear painted. There was no visual art created before the last century that modern technology would not have allowed a less talented person to make better and faster. Let us be realistic and assume this trend will continue. There is nothing we can do to avoid the solemn fact that Michelangelo's are no longer needed. This random quote in a sea of chaos is very, very important to remember, but by the time you get to the bottom of the comic, everything has fallen apart. As the comics continue, they would genuinely get more surreal as they go on. Whether that be more cases of the comics falling apart in front of your eyes, or additions all revolving around morality in your place in the universe. It was clear that despite the fourth wall breaking, borderline dark humor many of these additions shared, these moments in exception were providing a look into the creator's psyche, and they seemed to be getting a little more common as they went on. There's also a common theme of mazes, and even special comic series with totally different art styles, that were supposedly drawn and written by some of the creator's friends. Both of these details are also extremely important. 
As we get close to the very end, even the titles themselves start losing their minds. Some of them are extremely long and others seem like straight up gibberish. This leads us to the very last addition to this website. It's simply titled, The End. And what a shock it was. If you were reading this, I am dead. I've gone to the Madison Marriott West Hotel, taken the elevator to the 10th floor, and jumped off the balcony into the atrium. This comic is my last will and testament. With one exception, I leave my house, my debts, and all my material possessions to my family, for them to divide as they see fit. They've never been inclined to fight, and in any case, there's little worth fighting over, even in terms of sentimental value. I release all my intellectual property and all other data I have legal access and reproduction rights to, whether stored on my computer or other electronic devices, or storage media, or in cloud-based online systems, including my complete financial and medical history and all personal correspondence into the public domain. To Lemmer, I leave my online identities, Google accounts, domain names, and associated web spaces and FTP access to them. I leave the Black Stetson to Jude Watkins. P.S. If you want to know why I kill myself, the story is here. It's long, though. Just like that, things have become more tragic than you can possibly imagine. When I saw this, several questions immediately flooded my mind. But it also doesn't even stop here, because in this strip, there was also a link that supposedly explains why he did what he did. There's just one problem. It's really overwhelming. It's thousands and thousands of emails of a bunch of different people put together, with many messages that don't seem to make too much sense, also involving a bunch of random images from various forms of media. This truly has gotten strange, hasn't it? But let's backtrack for a second. In order to make more sense of everything that's going on here, let's go to where I first found out about this entire oddity to begin with. It was actually on an Ask Reddit thread, where the person in question said this. PoorlyPlannedComics.com Might not be the creepiest, but I can handle a lot of disturbing things. This one got to me. A childhood friend of my husband's. This guy was insanely brilliant. Literally. Husband lost touch over the years. These were his comics. The very last one was his suicide note. They had the memorial at his condo. He had blocked out all the windows and wrote in Sharpie all over the walls. It was his breakdown, trying to find the meaning before he took his life one of the most heartbreaking things I've ever seen. Because I had to use archives for all of this, I wasn't able to find a lot of things revolving this entire rabbit hole because they weren't too readily available. But a few things were mentioned in these comment sections that were very disturbing and interest peaking, and it even caused a very small subreddit at the time to be created in order to try and figure out everything that is going on. Thanks to all of that, I found out that this rabbit hole gets so, so much deeper. The person behind these comics is commonly known as Jack Masters, but also he went by Flimsy Parkins, Simon Sane, Ryder Rips, and much, much more. And there was also a name everywhere that he always mentioned, known as Susie. And who that Susie is has puzzled people for a very, very long time. Through all these names, different creative works were made through all of them, and these comics were just one of many. These other creations included other forms of creative writing and even games almost all of which having to do with mazes and labyrinths. As far as I've seen, the farthest major trace we can make of him on the internet is through the ZZT community. For those who don't know, ZZT was a video game from 1991 on DOS, where you were basically able to create games. And using the name Flimsy Parkins, that's exactly what he did. He was very active in this community during some relatively early stages on the internet, and wound up making some friends, and some of them would stick around for quite a while. Many of them were also into similar forms of arts as he was, and many of them stayed around with him right up until the end. They actually formed this group called Synod, and one of the surviving links gives a brief description of who these friends were. Most notably, though, was his site Castle ZZT. Contrary to what you'd expect from this title, its main focus wasn't actually on his ZZT games. This site is really weird, because its main gimmick essentially was that it would change up all the time. But, in its heyday, it seemed to be mostly about comics too. 
As time went on though, this site would seem to start falling apart. It's also much, much older than even poorly planned comics, as the first archive from it came all the way back in 2001. Creepiest of all though, is the content under the name Simon Sane. The main thing attributed to this name is actually a YouTube channel he had. There aren't many videos, but the videos that there are are very unsettling. Well, wait though, the seventh letter is, depending on how you count, either a space or, or P normally. So is, do we take the space from this or the P? Um, well, since the word is written over the word here, but then this word doesn't have it and instead it's written over there, I say take this P, but it counts as a P and a space depending on your interpretation of whether you're looking at the pink or of the metallic. Well, it's, uh, pretty clever. Yes, so we circumvented that problem. Um, I don't know, we circumvented it so much as kicked it down the road. Yes. Deep into the many different corners of the web, the massive explanation thread he made starts making more sense. Going on to the emails, the majority of the seemingly random names on the emails are these other names he used that we went over earlier. Jack Masters, Simon Sane, and some of the names of those friends that we went over earlier. There's also the name Susie, once again, the most mysterious name of all. So after reading all of this now, what truly happened here? Well, before I get into it, I want to shout out this Reddit post which organized the information in the link, as well as some other information from various other crannies deep in the web better than I could have. That being said, it all begins with this book called Maze. This was a puzzle book written by Christopher Manson in 1985, where 10k would be given to whoever correctly solved the puzzle. Many people got close, but nobody actually wound up solving it, so the prize money was split between the people that got the closest. Figuring out this puzzle was a huge obsession of Jack's, and is likely why so many of his works feature a theme of mazes. However, later in life, Jack would also become disillusioned with the book, believing that it was so difficult to solve, not because of the brilliance of his creator, but the opposite. He thought it was an enticing puzzle that was constructed poorly. Meanwhile, a multitude of Jack's friends had an entire podcast devoted to attempting to solve the puzzle entitled Mazecast. And of all of these people, one of them took extreme importance regarding everything that happened here. His name was Vincent Watkins, and he actually wrote his own puzzle book, this book became another extreme obsession in Jack's life. He believed it was historically important, and it also borrowed from Mays, which he was likely right about due to Vince's background. But there's something else that happened which was arguably even more important regarding everything here. Vince got into contact with Andrew Hussey, and if you don't know who that is, he's the creator of Homestuck. Hussey agreed to do some illustrations for Vince and drew a couple based off of the draft. However, Jack was obsessed with the idea that Hussey had stolen core concepts, imagery, and puzzles from Vince's book and embedded them in his popular webcomic, Homestuck. On 4chan specifically, he went on some major tangents about his theories, then posted the links to the unreleased Ido Fusicon illustrations from Hussey. As time passed by, Jack believed that he had to write his own story down, much in the vein of the puzzles he was obsessed with. His story would be a puzzle like that, not just because he was incredibly skilled and interested in mazes and puzzles as a whole, but also because he genuinely saw himself as someone that was on a different level and beyond understanding. He fell further and further from reality over time as these theories became further removed from reality. Later on, he even believed that these books were written for him, about him, and were mocking him. We also know that towards the end, he began increasing his usage with LSD and added AI, which undoubtedly worsened his psychosis. This all came to its conclusion in the form of a link that we see here. He finally made his own story, much in the cryptic vein of the puzzles he obsessed over, hoping that one day, people may piece it together. The conclusion of all these events resulted in his tragic death, the completion of his story, and one of the most tragic internet tales I've ever seen in my life. Through this entire ordeal, one question remains, and that is, who was Susie? Well, luckily for us, this question seems to be arguably the main point. 
We know that Susie was not merely another name like Simon Sane or Flimsy Parkins, because this name was the only one to constantly be mentioned even under all his other names. Through reading intensively about Jack for a while, I do think I have an answer. To me at least, it seems very plausible that Jack was dealing with a multitude of mental health conditions, and his story actually confirms at multiple points that he was dealing with either schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder. One of the main characteristics of these disorders are delusions, which definitely explains the really far-fetched theories about Andrew Hussey and Homestuck. Through his mentions of Susie, he states how she always listens, but then even refers to one of his LSD videos that we watched where he stated that there was a back and forth with him and Susie. This was that same video where he was essentially talking to himself for three hours. So it seems that Susie was possibly a split personality of Jack's, and he even mentions the writing she put on his walls and her violent thinking. Overall, this journey we have taken tonight is unlike any I have ever experienced here on the internet. It truly reached onto all the corners of the web, and truly felt like a maze at points. Jack finally made what he believed was his magnum opus, but we of course wish it didn't end the way it did. Jack truly was a brilliant mind. His art was unlike anything you'd see anywhere else. It was experimental, constantly questioning narrative structure as a whole, and also gave the feeling of being in a maze. Despite the problems he dealt with internally, he was truly able to impact many that he faced in his lifetime. May Jack Masters rest in peace.